um, today. So welcome to our live uh, lesson for today. My name's Bethan Edwards um, and I'm the Academic Director here at Specialist Language Courses. Um, today I'm going to cover OET Reading A and we're going to look at some tips and strategies. So before starting, we have a few tips for the lesson today. Uh, first, our lesson is being recorded, um, but feel free to take notes or screenshots, uh, but know that we'll be sharing this on our YouTube channel um, after the session today. So um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, you can also find uh, lots of free OET tips um, and strategies um, on our YouTube channel as well. Um, second, uh, let's uh, talk about how we're going to use Zoom today. So we're going to be using the chat box, which you've started using for uh, tasks during the class. We're going to be using polls um, to ask specific questions and discuss the answers. So answer a poll, the window will appear on your screen, choose the answer and click submit. And then we also have the question and answer function. So the question and answer function, we, if you have any questions throughout the session, write them here and we'll do our best to answer these at the end. And um, third, don't forget to register for our next week's live lesson. So next week's live lesson uh, will be on the topic of um, listening A, uh, tips and strategies. And we will put the link to register um, in the chat box uh, today. So our topic for today is reading A. So we're going to go over an overview um, of reading A to understand uh, what you need to do in reading A. We're going to look at some strategies and um, talk about how you can approach reading A in order to be successful. And we're also going to do some uh, talk about some study tips as well. So um, let's come to our uh, first question. So my first question for you today is, uh, what do you know about reading A already? So on the screen, you have got five different statements um, and there is one statement that is true. So I'm going to launch the poll and I would like you to read the questions and choose which one you think is true. Okay, so the poll should be on the screen. You can vote now. Okay, great. So click on the answer that you think is true and then click submit. Okay, great. So we've got some different answers coming in here. Okay. Okay, good. So um, the majority of you have uh, chosen one particular answer. So let's have a look and see which one that is. So um, here are the results and the majority 56% of you have chosen um, three as the true uh, statement here. Now, this is correct. So reading A tests your ability to find information quickly. So let's just have a look at these other answers. Um, reading A is 20 minutes, almost, but not quite. It's slightly less, it's 15 minutes. You can go back and check your answers at the end of the reading paper. So this is the end of the whole reading paper. This is not true. You can only check your answers within the 15 minute time limit for reading A. Reading A tests your ability to read text carefully to find opinions. This is not reading A, this is reading C. And reading A tests your ability to read for gist and purpose. Again, not reading A, but more found in uh, reading B or perhaps C. So let's clarify what happens in the OET um, reading test in part A. So um, part A is, as we mentioned, 15 minutes only. Um, you have four short texts and then you have some tasks to complete. 
of a matching task, a gap fill task, and a short answer uh, question task. Now, the whole of the reading paper um, is 60 minutes, and B and C are 45 minutes, um, and we'll talk about reading B and C um, in, in another live lesson um, coming soon. So, reading A, let's look a little bit more about what you can expect. So, you will have four texts. One text will have numerical or visual information, so maybe a table or a chart or a, or a diagram. You have 20 questions, and there are three different task types, matching, sentence completion, and short answer questions. Taking a closer look at the texts. The text could be based on any of the 12 professions within uh, the OET exam, or they can be of a general medical interest. So if you're taking OET medicine, um, it may not necessarily be directly related to your speciality um, or nursing, but it will be of a general medical interest. All texts are related to the same topic. So all four texts will be about the same topic, perhaps the same condition um, or the same illness. Um, they are texts that are commonly found in the workplace, so in a clinic or perhaps in a um, hospital. And they are texts that are used when dealing with a patient. So in Reading A, you're not looking at research, in-depth research papers. They are texts that you may use when dealing with a patient. For example, diagnostic tools, uh, management guidelines, or perhaps information on dosages. Okay. Now let's have a closer look at these texts. So here we've got an example of the kinds of texts you might expect to see um, in OET Reading A. As you can see, um, each text is labelled with a letter, so A, B, C and D. Um, they're all on the same topic, so they're all on the topic of vertigo. Um, and you can see that we have um, a text, we have so a diagram and we also have a table. Um, so this is um, the layout that you can expect um, in your reading A. Let's take a closer look at the questions that you will have to answer. So we've got our topic, our theme, which is vertigo. You will have a matching questions. So you have a matching task. So um, within this task, what you need to do is you need to read the statement and you need to decide which text contains that information and then write the letter here. So this is um, the matching task will always be the first task. So it's very helpful for you to know um, the format of OET and what to expect on exam day. Uh, the more familiar you are, the, the more it can reduce any exam day nerves that you might have. If you know what to expect, you know what the first task is going to be, that will help you to prepare. You also have um, short answer questions. So as you can see, you have a question and you need to write a short um, answer uh, with a word or a short phrase um, here. And you also have um, gap fill or sentence completion. Now, um, sentence completion, you need to read the sentence and you need to find out the missing information and fill it in here so it makes a complete sentence. It's important to note these phrases here. You need to write complete with a word or a short phrase from the text. So this means that you need to look in the text and find the right word or phrase and put it into the right place. You, you should be very careful with copying words accurately and make sure your handwriting is clear and make sure you don't have any spelling mistakes. So you don't need to invent any words to go uh, to answer these questions. You need to take them from the text. It's testing your reading ability. Um, a short phrase for those of you who are familiar with IELTS, perhaps. Um, sometimes you have a, a specific number of words, uh, no more than three words. OET don't give you the specific number, but a short phrase is usually three words, um, possibly four. But if you find yourself writing seven or eight words, then you know you've written too many and you need to go back and check your answers. So 
what reading skills? So here is a question for you. So into the chat box, um, can you tell us what reading skills do you need to practice to be successful in reading A? Great, so, okay, good. So pop your ideas in the chat box. Interesting. Okay, so we've got a lot of people who are, are quite familiar. So we've got the two reading skills, skimming and scanning, definitely. And we've also got reading quickly, which is also very important. Remember your 15 minute time limit um, uh, in reading A. Great, so everybody's got the same idea. Everyone's quite aware of skimming and scanning. So it's also important that you have a really clear idea of what skimming and scanning is. So in part A, you need to read quickly and you need to practice skimming and scanning. So just make sure you're familiar with these terms. So if you skim read a text, you read it to get the general idea of the meaning. For example, um, if you're in an exam, you might decide to approach a text by looking at the title, the introduction, diagrams, subheadings, and then you read the text for the main idea. You're not reading every word, you're not reading in detail, you're looking for the main idea. Whereas scanning is when you are looking for specific information, for example, numbers or names or amounts or dosages in OET, um, or the specific name of medication perhaps, um, the example here is if you are doing a reading test, you might need to scan a text uh, to find a population rate. So, uh, for example, a number, um, or you might need to find out if, if figures, uh, numbers are true or false. So in OET, you're scanning for perhaps uh, numbers, dosages, names, etc. So how should you approach um, reading A? So there are, as you've seen, you have 15 minutes. Skimming and scanning is very important. So making sure that you have a clear set of steps and strategies to follow in the exam will help you with time management. So um, first of all, uh, make sure that you do not read the text first. So this is the advice. By reading the text, we mean reading the text from beginning to end in detail. You do not have time to do this. Um, you should look at the headings instead, look at the heading of any texts. Um, most texts will have headings, some might not. Then in that case, look at the format or look at the layout of the text. For example, here we can um, look at text A, we look at the heading um, and we can assume that in this text we have more information about um, BPPV. Um, so what are the causes, what happens, etc. Um, text B, we can see just from the heading that it is a test. So we can assume that perhaps we'll have more information on how to conduct the test or who conducts it and why it's used or when it's used. Um, text C, treatment. So we can expect to find information about the treatment um, and different approaches. And text D is management options. So we can find information on how the, how, what are the different ways to manage this condition. So just by looking at the headings, we can um, deduce um, quite a lot of information about the text. And this is key when you are doing um, the first task type, which is a matching task. So every OET exam, the matching task will be first. So there'll be the first uh, questions that you see. So the recommendation is you complete the matching task first. So um, in order to complete the matching task, you need to um, read the statement and then decide which text contains the answers. This can be done without reading the text in detail. This can be done only using the headings. Um, then you can use your time to check and confirm if necessary. So we're going to do some of these activities uh, together. So we have questions one to four and we have our headings here. So um, your approach should be to read the statement, 
underline any, any keywords that are going to help you find the answer. Um, and then we uh, look at the headings and we decide which one. So here we've got movement of debris in the inner our ear canal. So we can assume that this is not about management options. It's not about treatment. It's not about the test. So we can assume it is uh, in text A, which tells us more about the condition. Uh, number two, um, our keywords, we have faulty signals and cause vertigo. So again, we can assume it's not management, not treatment, not the test. So again, we can assume it is A. And let's have a look at number three together. So I would like you to um, decide, to so look at the screen and think about what keywords you need to underline and decide which is the right answer for question three and pop it into the chat box, please. Mm hmm. OK, so we have got a few different answers here, um, but the majority um, of you are choosing B. So, yes, if we look at our keywords, we've got procedure. So procedure um, is another way to explain um, a test. And we've got diagnose. So our answer for this one is B. We're looking at more information on how a procedure uh, that's used for diagnosis. Okay, and the same for number four, please. What do you think, where do you think you'll find the information about number four? Huh, interesting. So most of you are putting D uh, some people are putting A. Now, this is your opportunity. If you are between two texts, so it could be D, it could be management options, or it could be A, where they're explaining um, about the condition. So in this case, what you would need to do would be to look at the text to check. So our answer to this one is, in fact, A. So that's the opportunity where you would go and confirm the answer. Okay. So um, for the matching task, make sure you use the headings, make sure you do this quickly, and make sure you do this first. If you're not sure, then check, check the text and use your um, skimming and scanning um, skills to check the answer. So let's have a look at um, short answer questions. So in short answer questions, um, in the question, you will find what kind of information you're looking for and details to help you locate the information. So in question 11, we're looking for the type of treatment and the details is the name of a maneuver, so the Epley maneuver. So we can use this information, so underline or circle the key details in the question. Um, and then your next step is to decide which text to look in. Now, this is really important as it will save you time. Um, if you know which text to look in, then you are able to use your time efficiently, go to that one particular text and scan for the information that you need. So we have our four headings. So we're looking for what type of treatment is the Epley maneuver. So we think that we're going to look in at text C because it gives us details about treatment. So then you decide uh, text C and then you scan for the answer. So here is an extract from text C. And what we're looking for are these uh, pieces of information that we've put in here. So we look for um, Epley maneuver and we find it here in the middle of the text. So then we need to make sure that we read before and after to find the answer we're looking for. So we know we're in the right place. So here we are. So then we come back to our question, what type of treatment? So we were looking for um, more details about this maneuver. And we look in the text and we look more carefully and we find here rebalancing treatment. Now, 
make sure that you're choosing the right word that answers the question. If you notice, we have a sort of rebalancing treatment. When we come back to the question, we have the word treatment in our question. So we don't need to write rebalancing treatment in the answer, only rebalancing. Okay. So our other short answer question, so 12. Again, it's your turn. So the kind of information you're looking for is where. So we're looking for a place. The detail um, is the name of an exercise. We decide which text to look in. So we're going to look in text D here, and then you need to scan for the answer. So your turn. Off we go. Can you find the answer? Where can Brandt Durroff exercises be performed? Pop your answers into the chat box. Okay, great. Everybody's getting the right place. Um, and then it's a case of choosing which words exactly you need from the text. So you've all discovered it's home. Um, some of you are writing home and some of you are writing at home. So um, here is our answer. So you found the right place. You found the right phrase. And then you need to fill it in here. Now, our answer that we have is at home because we're talking about um, a place. So we've got the preposition as well. In the OET exam, sometimes there are words which are in brackets. So when you look at an answer key, if a word is in, in brackets, it means that you can either write home or at home. So just be careful that you're answering the right question. At home gives us the location. So this is the answer we have here. Okay, so let's have a look at our sentence completion. So sentence completion, um, you need to, first of all, use your prediction skills. So decide what kind of information are you looking for? Is it a name, a number, um, a dosage, or what type of word you're looking for? So we can use our grammatical knowledge and discover that we need a noun. And our noun will begin with a vowel because we've got um, this word here. An. So it must be followed by a vowel. We then use words from the sentence to help you locate the answer. So look for these key words and underline them. Then you decide which text to look in. So we're looking in text A and then we scan for the answer. So we look for our keywords moving, standing still. So we have here moving still. So we know that we're in the right place. And then we find our answer. Vertigo can cause an illusion that they are moving when they're actually still. So we have our answer here. Okay. So sentence completion. Let's have a look at 16 together. So we need to decide what kind of information we're looking for. We then need to use the words from the sentence to help us. So for 16, we're looking for a noun, a rate of, okay. We've got some keywords after CRP and low rate. And then we need to decide which text to look in. So for question 16, we're going to be looking in text D, which is management options. So here is your text. So I would like you to have a look and see if you can find the answer. What's the missing information here? Pop your ideas into the chat box when you're ready. Great. So people are finding the answer. Well done. Great. Okay. And, and all very good spelling. That's great and very important. So we are looking for CRP rate and BPPV. So we look in our text and we find the information here. We then need to choose which word we need. 
So we've got after CRP and low. So we've got rate and low. So we know we're in the right place. And then we choose our word recurrence, low rate of recurrence. OK, and, and as you've done today, make sure that you, you you're careful with your spelling. OK, so those are those. That's an approach that you can take to to use your time effectively in reading A. So now how can you practice to get ready for reading A? So it is a good idea to be methodical when you do reading A practice. Make sure you follow the steps. Um, and your methodical having a clear approach before the exam and practicing it will help to reduce your nerves on exam day because you know what steps you're going to follow and what to expect. The strategies we've looked at today um, are effective strategies, but you will need to practice and train and speed up. So the idea is you practice these strategies and uh, you you do them and you practice and then you're able to do this quickly on exam day. Make sure you practice your scanning skills every day. You can do this in your everyday life um, and make sure you practice your skimming skills. So some um, study tips. You can use text to practice your scanning skills. For example, you find a text and this is on the topic of BBPV. Um, you can scan quickly for all of the instances of the word vertigo and time yourself and make sure you're doing this quickly. Or you could give yourself a task of finding all of the numbers in the text. And again, you're training your eyes to move quickly to find information um, at, at, a, at a fast speed. Um, a good resource for this is um, patient information leaflets. Um, so you have patient info or the NHS have plenty of patient information leaflets to use to practice your scanning skills. So our top tips for reading A is don't read the texts in detail first. Use the headings to help you. Use the information provided in the question, so those keywords to help you look, find the answer. This is important. If you get stuck, move on. You only have 15 minutes, um, and you may find the answer later on when you're looking for something else. So move on. Make sure you practice your scanning skills and your skimming skills. So a summary of the strategies for matching, make sure you read the questions, decide which text contains the answers, then quickly check if necessary. Um, short answer questions, uh, follow the steps, decide what type of information you're looking for, what details will help you find the information, which text contains the answer. Then for sentence completion, make sure that once you've found the answer, you read before and after the gap to make sure it makes sense. And for short answer questions, make sure that you're not repeating any of the words from within um, the question. OK, so time for questions. So you can use the question and answer box and we will do our best to answer some of your questions um, today. OK, so if anyone does have any questions, if you pop them into the question and answer box, it's in your Zoom um, toolbar. It should be um, next to near the chat function where you've been answering the questions. OK, so we have a question. Need to paraphrase? No. So this is a very clear answer to this one. No paraphrasing needed for reading A. You must take the, your answers directly from the text and make sure that you um, spell the word correctly and you write clearly. So make sure you take um, the um, answers from the text. OK, um, so we have another question. Do they collect the paper after section A? Um, yes. So after um, question, uh, after section A, if you're doing the paper based test, your paper is physically taken away and you cannot make any changes. If you're doing computer based tests, then the time limit is up and then you cannot access um, any your answers again after that. Um, we have. Um, 
Okay, so we have a specific question about the type of answers. We have a couple of questions about the answers. So here, if the question is what type of test and the answer is blood test, do you need to write blood only or blood test? It's a good question. Um, so you should uh, try to avoid um, repeating any unnecessary words that are already um, in the question. So in this specific example, um, I think that both um, answers would likely be possible. If the question is what type of test, you could write blood or blood test. Often with this, um, two answers are acceptable as long as you get the meaning um, clear. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we have a question about um, answer sheet. Now, this is a good question. In OET, uh, I'm sorry, in IELTS, you have extra time to complete the answers on a separate answer sheet um, in listening, for example. Um, but in OET, you need to write your answers directly onto the question paper within the 15 minutes. Okay. Um, okay. So thank you, um, everyone, for your questions. Um, we've, um, I hope we've answered uh, some of them um, for you today. Um, and just uh, finally, um, don't forget to uh, register for our next session. So our next session will be um, next week, and it will be on listening A, um, tips and strategies. Um, we're giving live lessons uh, weekly. Um, on a variety of different papers um, in OET. Um, so please stay tuned to our social media um, platforms and you'll be able to find more information about what topics we have um, coming up. Um, and we're also going to put the uh, link to register in the chat uh, for you today. Um, so a few of you have been asking about materials. So um, if you are preparing for OET, we have uh, the perfect course for you. So we have Reach OETB, which is for nursing, and uh, we have a version for medicine. So this will take you through the strategies and um, give you practice in um, what you need uh, to do to prepare yourself for OET. Uh, we also have the OET Writing Correction Service. So you can um, have your writing corrected by one of our OET experts and we have a brand new OET um, practice test that you can use to help uh, prepare and uh, check your your timings um, so all of the links will be listed um, in the chat box for you um, and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact us at inquiries at specialistlanguagecourses.com um, or go to specialistlanguagecourses.com and use the live chat function um, and we'll be able to give you uh, lots of information on how to um, prepare for OET. Okay, uh, that's it from me. Um, thank you for coming, everybody, and um, have a lovely day. <laughs>